Hey guys, what's happening? So, gotta do some updates to the Orca. I need to just take the power supply out of this one and then move it to my uh, Celeritas. My other Celeritas build. Let me turn around so you can see it. Um, over there. So, um, what I need to do is I designed like a whole uh, platform for a power supply. Um, and then I created some like a um, little wire management and little things are here so I can nicely organize the wires um, yeah because nobody nobody's actually this originally was a solvable printer so nobody's actually gonna have this box so I'm gonna redesign well the box like that so whoever if anybody wants to print this printer out um, you can do it so I mean what's unique about this printer is this is designed for speed and um, I need to upgrade the drivers to my 5160s that I had for a while. I just haven't had a chance to put install them. So, I'm actually building two printers. I'm building the Orca and the Celeridis at the same time. And the Celeridis is, is going to be like absurd speed. Uh, was where this is going to be, I mean, even though this is going to be ridiculously fast with those, um, the LDO superpower uh, motors with the big heat sinks I, I built in the back. Um, yeah, I need those big heat sinks to, to draw the, the heat from that, uh, once I start stepping up the amperage. So, but yeah, I need to get it going. I need to install. So, I, I'm not going to go through all, I'll just show you a bit before and after. Because it's going to take me too long to make the videos. Um, yeah, I mean, I've uploaded a video for a long time. I have so many videos back. Um, yeah, I've already created, like, all of the spots for, like, the, the dual drivers. Uh, I'm going to like a, like a MOSFET here, dropping pieces. Um, MOSFET, dual drivers, and I should have an option for a, uh, somewhere in here, for a, um, uh, a buck converter. So, hopefully I remember to do the buck converter. Hmm. Alright, so, alright, get this down. I gotta take this thing apart. I'm gonna probably bring this up, flip it over to the side, and uh, get it going. All right, well, before I get started with this, I, uh, I actually made a series of me uh, rebuilding that lathe over there, but that's one of my new additions right there, that uh, old Craftsman Atlas lathe. So, yeah, I'm making modifications for that thing and doing different things for it. But, uh, yeah, I just got that and restored it with a $600 off rep score. Um, all right, so i got to flip this over. Right, so I can finally organize this motor. It's smart to get the power out. So I'm going from like this internal power supply situation to going to the external. So yeah, I got to pull all this stuff out, unwire it, and then um, get the all the different spots on. But yeah, that's my little buck converter that powers the Raspberry Pi Four. Originally, I actually added this capacitor to maybe like uh, smooth out the LEDs, the flickering, like when it's you know flickering for the uh, pulse width modulation for the uh, bed. You know, this is a pretty complicated printer, but just because it's quad leveling, it's a quad level bed. Except the unique thing is uh, the ball mounts here, and it can it quad levels, quad level belt drive. So just try to keep the order. It's one, two, three, four. Kind of goes in a circle, kind of like a Veron. 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 I'm not gonna pronounce that. Um, all right, so let's get going. Yeah, I think I was temporarily putting. I put some twenty two oh eights in there. Temporary. Yeah, because I took the 2209s I had in here, or 5160s, and I put them in my, uh, they're going to be for my Celeritas, the quad quad drive motors. And got the four pieces on. So, this made more important. So the power supply is going back here, next to the, uh, the mains, the 120 input, AC input. Board's going to be here. This is going to be open space right here. So, somewhere up in here will be open space. Um, I guess I didn't make a hole for the, the buck converter, so I thought maybe I might have the buck converter up here, maybe next to the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then, like I said, the two drivers and the MOSFET. But I'm going to actually have that little stuff, the little fingerboard I made here, which is going to run around it's going to organize the wires nice and tight. And I think I made extra ones from up here, too. I think I, I, think I yeah, exactly, I measured it, so it would be, I could fit all those pieces in there nice and nice and clean. 
if you guys are wondering about this fingerboard, it mounts to a 2020 rail, 20, any sort of 2020, 2040. It just snaps in place like that. There's like a little, uh, it's kind of like a rounded uh, edge on there that locks in place. <clears throat> I'm actually, I'll upload this to my Thingverse page if you want it. Alright, there it is, all wired in. 5160 plus. So what's interesting is, you think these would be called the Pro? Like the Pro ones, the Big Tree Tech 5160 Pros are actually on the on the board. Whereas these are called the Plus. You think these would be called the Pro, and the other ones would be called the Plus. Um, I, yeah, wired. Uh, I actually had to cut off the connector, and I put little ferrules on there. So on the MOSFET, I don't have a fan on here now, um, because I'm not going to be loading this thing up that much with that bed. But if it get, gets hot, I'll, I'll just put a fan on here and you know, run it back to the board. Not a big deal. Um, but this is, I'm not putting an extreme amount of power through it. So I went from about 15 amp meanwhile power supply to this. Actually, I got it on sale for 10 bucks. So who knows about the quality. It's definitely not getting any meanwhile quality, but uh, it's 25 amp. So I, what's funny is all this stuff actually worked on on a 15 amp power supply. Um, even powering the Raspberry Pi, so. Alright, Monster, I'm going to have to get that cable in there. Kind of came out. But yeah, these are my little, uh, you know, this is a MOSFET. This is going to cool the 429, uh, 2209, or yeah, 2209s, um, for the Quad Z. Yeah, if you're not familiar with this printer, um, this is a quad, quad, uh, quad mesh, quad bed mesh. Um, alright, so i got to flip around on the... It's a nice, much cleaner wiring install here. You know, I wish, I mean, I might make this more clean in different revisions, find a better way to make that cleaner. But the cool thing is, because eventually I'm going to be going to an AC heated bed. So this will, I'll replace this with a uh, solid state relay. But the cool thing is, if I just need, if I want to change my, change my mind, I want to change something, um, I'll just change and print out a new plate. I don't have to print out the whole thing. Um, or if I change the motherboard, I just print out the, the motherboard plate. Um, eventually what I might try, I mean, I don't know if it's even, I mean, we'll see what kind of performance I get. Because remember, the, the whole, the whole, I designed this uh, printer for performance. It's not going to be as fast as the Celeritas over there. The Celeritas is going to be ridiculous. Um, I just figured this design, I don't think I could drive it to the, this level of the Celeritas design, so, um, I don't know. So, but I, so what I might do is put a, uh, the reason why there's a hole here is that, I might put like a 5 or 10 amp um, 40 volt power supply and then drive these drivers at a higher level. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what I can get with 24 volts. Um, but like I said, that's a possibility. That's what the space is for. I mean, that was originally my idea when I, when I got these. I was going to run at 48 volts, but um, I don't want to overheat these. I mean, even though I have these huge heat sinks in there, I don't want to go crazy overheating them. So. Um, yeah, that's a lot of slack on the wires too, because I'm sure I'm going to be changing, using these stepper drivers and different printers, so I didn't want to cut them short, you know. So, the cool thing about these little um, fingerboard, wire management, whatever you want to call them, um, is that uh, like I can, can wrap the wire up there, hide the wire, so. I don't think I've actually uploaded any of this stuff from this printer on Thingiverse yet. Um... Yeah, I might want to create. I was, I was trying to create a GitHub and it was a headache. I, they said that my email address was already taken. I don't even want to hear that. Um, all right, let's fire this up. I'm going to go into. Uh, I, I've already showed you guys how to do uh, set this up in Clipper on my previous videos of the 5160 plus video. So I'm not going to go through that. We'll just all, once I get it going and configured, um, I'm going to have. I'm going to uh, do a test cube. But on the fans I put here, I created these little fan mounts. Um, I'm actually going to have these. So when this activates, this, these uh, driver cooling fans, um, I'm actually just going to do the same thing for these right here. So when the printer is done, all the fans turn off. When the print's done, um, the same thing with this. So as soon as I start moving the thing around, these, these will activate. All right, let's fire this up. Yeah, originally my hole spacing wasn't correct, or my original, you can see it right there. Um, I got frustrated. I just melted some holes. So that looks horrible. But in my next revision, I'm going to just put those holes in the right spot. Let me hear it pop. 
I want to test the power. Hopefully the Raspberry Pi comes on. Yep, cool. All right, put that down. That's how I zero the bed. Like I said, it's quad, quad tilt. Like those little, see those little, they're like little ball sockets. It actually works really, really good, actually. It's actually the flattest I've ever actually had a bed on any 3D printer. Um, all right, so I'm going to Clipper and I uh, will get it configured. I'm doing the quad the bed leveling now, but right now I have interpolation off. I think it's noisy. I should have 16 micro seven. Yeah, typically you have better performance. If you go, if you enable micro stepping, let's say like 256 or something, then uh, it, yeah, it definitely sounds quieter, but you lose performance, especially at high speeds. Um, yeah, this thing has way more power too, like insane amount of power. Um, like I crashed it like when I was getting the redo the configuration and it was bam, 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 bam. Yeah, see the quad level. Wow, I might have to figure this out. Sounds like one of those old school um, 8 bit printers, you know, when I first started out. Um, 8 bit went to the original uh, printer bot, but that's actually weird. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm running this at uh, 1.4 amp. I'm gonna feel these, uh, see how warm these heat sinks get here. Ooh, these are hot. Wow. Yeah, these things are running way hotter than the... Yeah, I'm obviously, I must be overpowering these things or something. Well, that's why I had these big heat sinks on there. Yeah, it took me days to machine that thing. Multiple operations. Yeah, this thing's gonna fly. Yeah, I'm barely even pushing this thing right now. Alright, let's go. Alright, so I think I know these were getting super, super hot. I, mean, I was kind of surprised at 1.4 amp. Um, so, uh, I actually had to adjust. I looked in the manual and I, I guess I never saw it before, but I needed to adjust the sense resistor from 0 0.05 or 0 0.075 to 0 0.022. Um, plus, I, I, then I lowered it down to 1 amp just to see what this thing was because that was weird. At 1.4 amp, this thing shouldn't get that hot. So, 24 volt, 1.4 amp, it was blazing, blazing hot. So, I'm thinking the current sense resistor wasn't correct, so it was sending way more current than it should have. Um, Alright, so I'm going to run this at uh, 1 amp, see how hot this gets. Start from there. Alright, so let me show you what I've <coughs> done so far. So right now I'm actually up at... Um, so this was the first one where I didn't have the current sense resistor. I had to shut it off um, because it was overheating the motor. It was like crazy. Um, and then I went to 1 amp. And at 1 amp, this thing was skipping steps like crazy. And then at 1.4 amp, I'm still... Losing some steps here. You can see like the uh, the layer shift here. Besides that, the quality is perfect, um, and I'm actually moving really really fast. So uh, I brought the current up to 1.8 amp, and we'll see if I get another skip step. Am I just going to keep on experimenting with it, and we'll uh, we'll see here. Quality is great, except for that. Yeah, it's not hitting something. So I, I think I don't know. Just because it's it's moving fast, I think it. I'm not sure. I've never had this issue with other drivers before, so 
don't know like what's uh what's up here. So all right, we'll do another test print at 1.8 amp. Yeah, I've been messing with 3D printers for a long time. I've fixed hundreds of 3D printers. Um, every driver has its own characteristics, its own unique, you know, it's almost like it has its own behavior. And every single printer is different, you know, you just gotta like dial the, the driver for that printer. Um, like different motors, like you have d different motors at different audible noises. And um, yeah, I have some belt squeaking I have to figure out on this printer, but. Um, yeah, it's funny, like every, like this, this, I mean, I've never actually messed with an external driver pro driver like this before, but, um, well, a, a pro driver on a 3D printer, tons on a, on a CNC machines. Um, so, yeah, just trying to figure out this thing dialed in. And yeah, maybe it wasn't a scribe this good enough, but like on certain drivers, like the 2209s, if I do 1.4 uh, amps on a, on a 2209, it crashes the driver. On the 2240s, about 1.4 is a max it can handle. Um, but these drivers, I mean, they are behaving different than your typical drivers. I mean, they are external drivers, but... I mean, even at... Um, 1.8 amp, it's not even getting warm. So, like, before I actually had that current sense resistor, I must have been putting a lot of amperage to these motors to get them that hot. Should probably check the wires too. <laughs> Trying to overheat the wires. And the more that I raise the current, it seems to be running better. Yeah, I'm pretty much sure that's it's like I said, the amperage rating is seems like it's it feels like it's different for this driver. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep on bringing the current up. I'm gonna do these all these a lot of test cubes until I get uh, the motor starts getting a little bit warm. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna run these things super hot, but yeah, they're not even warm at all. All right, let's let this one finish. See if I could we'll fix the uh, layer shift. All right, they run pretty good. So it's been a couple days. Um, that's my 2.2 amp. So I, I could probably a 2.2 amp. It seems like it gets a little bit warm, like very slightly warm. You know, these heat things definitely help out. But um, I'm gonna keep on experimenting with this and try to find the find the sweet spot. But um, I could probably get up to probably 2.8 amp without going crazy, like overheating it too much. Um, just by seeing what it goes from 1, one amp to 2.2, .2, the difference in temperature. But yeah, what's weird, the scale is different for these uh, for these drivers. So, all right, all right. So, yeah, if your if your current is too low, then uh, you'll get like I said, you'll get the skipped uh, you'll skip some steps. That was one amp. All right, cool, awesome drivers so far at least.